It's a side of Scott Ross you've never seen before. I went to church, but I stood in the parking lot and got high first. He and his wife, Nedra, look back at 50 years of ministry and marriage. I said, God, he's not listening. You have to speak to him. And sticking together through thick and thin. If anything, it was us against the world. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Efren Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio 5. At number five. Shaquem Griffin. Linebacker. University of Central Florida star linebacker Shaquem Griffin joins his twin brother Shaquille with his draft to the Seattle Seahawks. And he does it with only one hand. The road here, some would say impossible. Born with a non-fully formed left hand because of amniotic band syndrome, Griffin's elected to amputate the hand at age four to ease his daily pain. The first thing I thought growing up, what people are going to say, how he's going to be able to handle it as a little kid. I just needed somebody to give me a chance to show them that I can. Now he's getting that opportunity. Shaquem. Yes, sir. Hey, it's John Schneider calling, buddy. How you doing? Uh, I'm just... <laughs> I can't, I can't even breathe right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a dream come true for us too, buddy. We're happy to have you, man. At number four. Everyone wants to meet you when you're a superstar, but Katy Perry wanted to meet the Pope, and she did. I'm here in Rome at the Vatican. I'm with my mama, my darling. It's a great day. I'm so excited. The singer and her actor boyfriend, Orlando Bloom, met Pope Francis in Vatican City Saturday, along with others. At number three. Bieber on drums. The pop star continues to share his faith with his more than 99 million Instagram followers. Posting this Instagram photo of himself, standing near a wooden cross. It came during a trip to his Canadian hometown Sunday, visiting his grandparents and touring a museum about his life. Justin also posted this photo with the caption, running from the devil like. The Beeb also has a link to this Hillsong worship tune on his page. I surrender. I surrender. At number two. Say your name is. Actor Will Smith has attracted more than 15 million followers on Instagram in only four months. And in a recent Throwback Thursday post, he used his skydiving trip to Dubai to share a lesson about God and fear. So you fly and you go up to 14,000 feet and the guy walks you up and you're looking down to death. They say, on three, one, and he pushes you on two because people grab on three. And you fall out of the airplane and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. At number one. This video of a high school kid singing in his school cafeteria has pulled more than a million views on YouTube and earned the young man a record deal. This ain't no ordinary words. This ain't no ordinary song, yeah. Fresh out of high school, Kalante Gavin's first album, The Higher Experience, is available now. Studio 5 caught up with Kalante at the Atlanta stop on his tour. So we sit here as a completed album has now been released for people yeah, to hear. Man. How are you feeling? Man, I feel incredible, man. Um, extraordinary. <laughs> because he's extraordinary. The album, uh, it released April uh, 27, 2018. And I'm just so grateful to God that I'm able to bless the world with, and literally when you hear it, you're going to hear my heart, man. Just, I'm just blessed that the world gets to experience the ministry of Kalante Gavin. Uh, Kalante, I feel incredible. <laughs> yes, 19 and a record deal. Very is nice. He, is he going to be the new star? Is that I really, I, I've, I, I've loved him from the YouTube video that actually uh, 
first posted several years ago. He's now since graduated high school. I loved him then and have followed him and said, okay, something's got to happen. And then he does get a record deal based on that YouTube clip. The record um, president saw it and pursued him. And what I really respected about him, talked to his parents as well, is when the record label approached him, they initially said no. Uh, he's not ready. Mm. He's not ready. And they said that he's wow. not ready because he wasn't ready for ministry. And he needed to get ready and prepare himself and truly get his so, heart right with God. So is he going to college and so some, he, he is, seminary? He's, <laughs> he's in is ministry now. I think right now he's going to take a little break, tour with this album, uh -huh. see how this goes. Um, but you can find him on the tour circuit. His concert is not like a typical concert. He spends a bulk of the time ministering because it's filled with young people just like himself. And he's telling them, you don't have to do what the world tells you to do. You can have fun. You can be you. Be who God has created you to be. And that who is, that's who he wants to be. Okay. Beautiful story. Is he going to college? Uh, I don't know if he's going to college yet. <laughs> I think he's going to see, see how this, this you record, record thing on, does. Online at <laughs> University. We'll take you. Yes, yes. I'll pitch that to him because I'm certainly going to stay in touch with him uh, after that, that meeting. I really love him and his family. Beautiful family. All right, Will Smith, skydiving, talking about faith. I, I love that line. I, I remember when he took that trip um, and he was being interviewed now about it and, and talks about the fact that, you know, that point of maximum danger uh, is also uh, the point of minimal fear when you cross to the other side. And God places the best things on the other side of fear. How many of us can say, you know, there are things that God has called us to do in our lives, but we're afraid? Uh, but when you trust him and move past that fear, boy, aren't you glad. Definitely a Joshua moment. Yes, indeed. Do indeed. Not fear. No, no, <laughs> He's no. strong and courageous. <laughs> you got it. He hasn't <laughs> given the us Lord the spirit of fear. With you. Indeed, indeed. All right, Justin Bieber, is he going into ministry? You know, <laughs> uh, please with him. He is in the process of working on another album, and I will say this for him. It is very likely the album will come out at the end of this year or early next year, and it will be an album uh, of worship. I would be very surprised if that's not the case. That's what all those around him are saying, that he is, uh, still has the same team around him, but adding other voices in there, um, and they're helping to shape the music. And you see him tweeting Hillsong, following them, being at their concerts. He's definitely influenced by them. And I will say that we'll, his next album will certainly be an album of ministry to some degree. To some degree. To some degree, because I'm sure he's got, you, you know. You just hedged your bet. You, you came out and said it was going to be a worship album. I, 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 but I know he's, he's got to please his fans. <laughs> he's got to please his fans, but I, I, I can't imagine him Why not. Why wouldn't a worship album please his fans? No. I, 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 I'm a fan. I'd be happy with it, but I know they want to hear him sing about love and romance, too. So. Well, that could be he worship. He could do that, too. Indeed. Indeed. It's the ultimate worship. All right. It is indeed. Katy Perry going to see the Pope. This is is she going into ministry? I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but a dream come true for her uh, and for her mom to be there with her. Uh, she is there part of, a, it's, it's a human rights and, and health initiative that was happening this weekend. Uh, and she uh, was, was there in support of that. But she's long said she wanted to meet the Pope. Uh, and she got the opportunity Saturday, I believe that was. Well, good for her. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Indeed. The star. A rising star in the NFL, mm -hmm. Shaquem. Wow. Can you? I, I saw him play, and I, <sighs> it was just so inspiring. Indeed. I mean, here he is busted into the backfield pretty much on every play and being just a superstar on defense mm -hmm. for University of Central Florida. Yeah. And now going to be, is, so he's going to be with his brother? He's going to be with his brother for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, what a nice, nice story. And, you know, uh, credit to his dad because um, they're twins, uh, both love football. And he always made them play together to challenge each other so that his son, who was missing a hand, would not be able to to, to, to take that as an obstacle to prevent him. So his brother challenged him, uh, and then to now go and play with your brother. His brother joined the Seattle Seahawks last year. I think he was number three in the draft. Uh, Shaquem was number five in the draft. And to go to your brother's team and to be able to play with him again is certainly a dream come true for him. Yeah, it's and a what dream a family. for any family. Yeah, yeah. You got that right. Yeah. And I will say this, that when, when, when they called his name, it's my understanding from the stories that I've seen is that 
He was in the bathroom at the time. He <laughs> decided to go take a break. <laughs> and they're banging on the bathroom it's saying, you're missing it. You're missing it. Get out of here. Get out of here. They I'm, called I'm not you. going in the top five. That's <laughs> yes. not going to happen. Yes. I got time. <laughs> I got time. And he, he got called. <laughs> so I thought, how cute is that? So I think it was a cousin or someone literally banging down the door saying, get out of here. Get out of here. I'm There's busy. a phone call for you. <laughs> Tell them I'll call them back. <laughs> but it will be one to watch indeed, and a great team, Seattle uh, Seahawks as well. Uh, it, it, it'll be incredible to see that on the field. Absolutely. To say, Looking forward to know. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. And Ephraim, we'll see you again next week. See you next week. Well, coming up, the interviewer becomes the interviewee. Scott Ross gets his turn in the hot seat, and he gets questioned about his life, his controversial marriage, and his cancer diagnosis. The big C is not cancer, it's Christ. The big C is not cancer, it's the cross. It's commitment, it's covenant. That's where trust comes in. It's where faith comes in. And you have to hold to that. You must. That's why it's back to the Word. Scott and his wife Nedra take a trip down memory lane when we come back. Well, since the 1960s, Scott Ross has been a close friend of our family and a vital part of the ministry here at CBN. Well, recently, he and his wife Nedra sat down with Andrew Knox to talk about some of the challenges they faced over 50 years of marriage and to share the secret of their success. Nedra and Scott, congratulations on over 50 years of marriage. That's thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You did, did it, Nedra. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Is it really half a century? Half a I'm century. exhausted. You did pretty well for yourself here, Scott, of course. She's a lovely lady. You met. She was a Ronette. You were captivated right from the beginning, right? Actually, you met me at 16 before all the Be My Baby. So. And she, she became my baby <laughs> when she was a Ronette million selling records and run around the United States with the Beatles and they go to England and Stone so the Beatles saw a big party for her. All this stuff around Nedra, but number one, she wanted to be a wife and a mother. And a grandmother when I was young. <laughs> yeah, and a grandmother. <laughs> this was where her heart was. So her heart is for God, the Lord, and her husband and her children. She had the ground running as a mother. So you, you get married, and 50 years ago, an interracial marriage, that must have been a really tough start. We were talking about that last night. Because of being in New York, we did not have what was going on around the country because it was New York. And so New York was just maybe with segregation and stuff like that, maybe behind the, the scene. It wasn't up front. Later on, when we came to Virginia here, then we saw what the things, the racial sides of things in Virginia. Just people wanting to know, what was I? And I'd go, what do you mean? What am I? You know. We were doing some TV, and to Pat Robertson's credit, I was really accosted by some people, so-called Christians who wanted to know, same thing, where's she from, interracial marriage, etc. cetera. And uh, there were people who did not want to support the fledgling CBN at that time because of our marriage. But uh, Pat stood with us and, and said, you know, they, it's not the money, it's not the issue. And these two are married before God, and that's that. And uh, so we had that kind of support, you know? Did these experiences just bring you two closer together, or did it create tension with you? If anything, it was us against the world. We are who we are, and we're sticking together. And actually, when we started to pray together was on our honeymoon, which we really didn't know to do that so much. We had come to the Lord and had a real experience with Jesus. Together? Together. What was that experience? I was from Scotland. My dad was in ministry. I'd given my life to the Lord when I was five. Came to America when I was 10. Uh, but the challenges of a new culture 
and a number of other things. I, I walked away from the Lord for a long time. So I was in New York. I, I wasn't really walking with the Lord. So I came back to the Lord in a small church outside Hagerstown, Maryland, where my mom lived, where I'd lived. And uh, I came down to visit her with Nedra. And uh, mom wanted me to go to church. <laughs> I went to church, but I stood in the parking lot and got high first on grass, weed, marijuana. It's illegal in California, you know. But anyway, uh, we there, there, I got high and went to the church. And I always say this, I sat in the way in the back where the Lord couldn't see us. But in the middle of this church service, someone had a word there were two people there that the Lord was calling and say, you know, come back to me. I'll take your cares, your worries, put them on me. So a foundation of your marriage has been praying together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Every day. Right. Every day. After we got married, Pastor Vic gave us a gift of a small little there Bible. There it is. This, this is it. It's called Daily Light. And look, I mean, it's kind of beat up, you know. 50 years. That's 50 yeah, years worth of reading. I need some, uh, any of you binding people out there who like to help. <laughs> uh, so every day from day one, literally on our honeymoon, we start reading this. So when we're together and if we're separate from each other, then I have one and he'll have another version. Read the word and we'll ask each other, what did you get out of that? Not just read it to read it, but say, what here is speaking to you? So your marriage would not be what it is without God as the foundation? No, would, no, no, no way. No, no way. No way. I see myself as totally as a daughter of the king. That's how I see myself. So I let my mouth be that. Um, the way I carry myself be that. I'm a daughter of the king. Sometimes it's hard to live with a princess. Yeah, well, your father-in-law's God. I mean, take that one on. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. God is there. I have told God, I, I, I told God on him. I said, God, he's not listening. You have to speak to him. And guess what? God spoke to him. There are things that would come that would want to tear us apart because of my opinion, his opinion of the way we were going, how we were going to go. But we watched every time how God caused us to bow our knees to each other and, and to, to him. him. First, there's a Bible verse, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, so don't let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, we, we really adhered to that because uh, the issues will come up, family issues, they will, they will come up. Money. Uh, the pressure of money, the children, all that stuff. Let's not go to sleep with that kind of anger. There were two instances, I think I remember, where it was, we were talking about separating. It was that, you know, that tenuous a situation, very volatile, and, um, and made a decision to say, we don't want to embarrass God. We don't want to embarrass Jesus. We can't do this. So then we would submit to the Lord prayerfully and then to each other, forgive me, you forgive me, I forgive you. And uh, we, you know, back to the Word again, praying so forth and work it through. Getting your own pride out of the way. Oh yeah. You talk about people that use, sounds real spiritual, die to self. Well, that means, you know, Jesus said, you want to follow me, first thing you get to do is die. Simple. Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow. That's the pre prerequisite. I had stage four cancer back here in my mouth. And I've been through other bouts with cancer. And she was Florence Nightingale Plus, you know. Great nurse. I don't remember a lot of it, because I was out of it. And I didn't even know if I was gonna make it, you know, I wasn't even sure about that. But she was there, she slept in the hospital next to me and all the time, and I was totally dependent upon her and she was there. I told Jesus, guess what? This Florence Nightingale is so tired. <laughs> I had never been that tired in my life that I honestly said to God, I have 10 minutes for you. That's all I have left is 10 minutes. And I walked from his side of the bed, feeding him with tube 
in his stomach to coming around the bed and the Lord healed me and gave me strength like I had been on vacation. And I'm going, how did this happen? You know, when I just said, and I had never said before, I have 10 minutes, that's all I have. People hear that word cancer, they're terrified, right? And, yeah. And God's spoken to you something about that word. You know, the big C is not cancer, it's Christ. The big C is not cancer, it's the cross. The big C is Calvary. The big C is commitment, it's covenant. So it's not cancer. When the Lord's talking to Jeremiah, he said, I took you into a desert. Uh, look at all the times that God was quiet. He didn't answer. That's where trust comes in. That's where faith comes in. And you have to hold to that. You must. That's why it's back to the Word. One holds up the other when the other's down. That's how it works. So we've been faithful to each other because of having God bigger than us. It's bigger than us. Oh, what a wonderful couple. Uncle Scott and Nedra, uh, they've been part of my life uh, since I was 10 years old. And it's amazing to see how God has worked through them, used them, and, and been with them, even through some very difficult times. Stage four cancer, and today Scott is absolutely free of any cancer, and it's wonderful. Well, up next, meet a 10-year-old who wants to be just like her cartoon hero. Watch how Superbook's Joy teaches this girl to befriend a child being bullied when we come back. Inia is a young girl who live, living in Albania who has a role model. She wants to be loving and kind, just like the character Joy from CBN's animated series Superbook. Joy has made such a huge impact on her that her mother says it has changed her life. When I was five or six years old, I watched Superbook for the first time. Ten-year-old Enia found a hero in her favorite cartoon series. I am thinking all the time, why can't I become like Joy? She believes in God and she is good and kind. I began to believe and I started to pray. This cartoon changed the life of my daughter. The story of Esther when Joy makes friends with children that others have rejected, it had a strong impact on Anya. Joy in the cartoon box with a girl named Bonnie, who used a wheelchair. I thought, if Joy can be so kind and brave, so can I. So Anya befriended a child at school who had been bullied by classmates. I found out that she was a nice person, and I realized that all people need to be given a chance. Enia is one of the thousands of children across Albania whose lives have been changed through CBN's Superbook. Albanian missionary Rachel Byler has witnessed the influence of Superbook firsthand. We love the show Superbook in Albania because wherever we go, and this is true, wherever we go, uh, the kids have all know the song, and it's the song of salvation. This cartoon is very important for our country because so many children are in families who don't know Jesus. But now they know Gizmo, Joy and Chris, and they hear about God through them. Now I talk to my friends about Jesus. Thank you to everyone who made the wonderful Superbook. You can be a part of it. You can be a part of showing the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. Superbook is now in 43 different languages, and it's amazing what's happening as it goes out in Hindi, uh, in Albanian, uh, in Turkish, uh, in Bahasa Indonesian, in Tagalog, uh, in Mandarin. Uh, we're, we're getting the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. Uh, the surveys are showing 180 million people saw the program just last year. So uh, it's wonderful what's happening. You can be a part of it. How? Join the Superbook Club for a gift of $25 or more, and that gift goes into the uh, translation costs, the distribution costs, the production costs. We're in the uh, final season, season five, the, this year, next year. Uh, it all goes into that. 
And as our gift to you, when you give $25 or more, we'll send you three copies of the latest episode. It's the story of Joshua and Caleb, uh, the spies who went into the promised land and came back with a good report. If you want to be a part of it, join with us. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Philippians chapter 2. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. God bless you. We'll see you again.